Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. You can do the same at the Grizzly Gentleman for uh, some fantastic beard products that'll make your beard look and smell great. You can also go to TCG Player using the affiliate link below and shop there to help support the show. And last but absolutely not least, go to GreyVikingGames.com with the link below to get those sweet arena codes. What is up, Planeswalkers? Justin, aka Six, back with some Magic the Gathering Arena. Today, the day of, of me recording this, which is the 17th of March, uh, Wizards had a stream, a live stream about the arena economy. Now, this live stream is in here. The, it's in, in its entirety. They actually answered one of my questions, which is cool. Didn't exactly answer it to uh, my satisfaction, but it's neither here nor there. I will be linking this uh, in the description down below so that uh, all of you can read it uh, at your leisure. So, to sum up, essentially, uh, this, this paragraph is essentially like, we've heard the community talk a lot about the uh, arena economy. That is putting it lightly, for sure. Uh, and they said they've listened and discussed things internally, and I'll talk about some more here. Meanwhile, our science has made uh, things more difficult. Yes. Um, they... The thing is, like, their excuse here is that it's a tough topic and one you wanted to address holistically instead of piecemeal. That isn't technically uh, what what the issue has been, right? It's not technically that people wanted answers to each individual thing as they came up. We just want to hear something, right? It's like, we, we will, are currently talking about internally um, these things about the economy. We are aware of these other things about the economy that we either aren't working on yet or are not on our, like, um, on our radar in terms of, like, getting to that anytime soon. Right. That's more what people want when they want communication. But, okay. We're starting here. This is not the day we're making to solve every problem that the community has raised. Okay. Sure. That's fine. Um, discuss some fun. Short term. That's fine. Uh, cool. I don't care about this. Now, Arena's vision. Essentially, it's like, um, you want it to be... A magic experience for everyone anywhere. Okay. What does that mean? This is uh, whether players for comping your home on the go, on a PC, and your phone, you have access to everything Arena offers from going new blah, 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 blah. I don't care. Nothing. This is this is a nothing uh, statement, essentially. We want to embrace uh, magic's roots. We also must acknowledge that they are a different platform with own uniques and constraints. Uh, recently built to engage players with what we call a front list. Play at no cost, specifically standard constructed in recent draft. Uh, as time passes, we're continuing to expand the original blah, 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 blah. Bleh. I, I don't care necessarily. Because this doesn't this doesn't really say anything about the vision, right? It's just like, we just wanted people to be able to play on mobile, essentially. Like, they, you can just play it digitally. Like, that's... Okay, cool. Um, Sure, I guess. Uh, anyway. Economy 101. What exactly do you mean when you say economy? It's just uh, the way we earn and spend various resources, right? Sure, that makes sense. That's exactly what, what economy means in this situation. How do we get... Uh, the the resources needed to get the cards that we actually want to use. And then how how exactly are people spending those things, right? What are people re needing to spend them on? What are, they, what are the choices that we have to spend them on, right? Overarching goals of phil uh, philosophy. First of all, we're looking to balance the needs of our various players, whether they're trying out Magic for the first time, have been playing for two deca uh, decades. Most tend to fall somewhere in the days, months, and years between the two. This is not true. Right? This is absolutely not true. What are some of our overarching goals or the philosophy behind the economy? This is just not true. I'm fine with that not being the first and foremost. Right? This is a company. The first and foremost when balancing Arena's economy is for them to make the most money as possible while making sure players stay theoretically, and enjoy themselves as long as possible. That's the first and foremost. I don't appreciate being essentially lied to. And I don't like that companies essentially are pretending that they're like friends and family. Like, the people who are on the team who make Magic the Gathering. Yes, cool, awesome. But, Arena... Is for, the, the economy of Arena is first and foremost designed to make Hasbro money. 
and I just wish that was acknowledged as like, yes, we are a company. Uh, Hasbro wants us to meet certain uh, certain goals. This uh, The economy is one of the ways we meet those certain goals, right? That is the first and foremost. Regardless, we don't want players to feel like they must play 10 hours a day and complete all daily wins to remain competitive. That's, an that's a very important point. They don't want players... We don't want players to feel like they must play 10 hours each day and complete all their daily wins to remain competitive. From the people I've spoken to, this is not the vibe that they get. Essentially, in order for them to be competitive... Well, I guess I'll have to I'll touch on that in a, in a little bit. Our quests are based on uh, playing, not winning. Yeah, okay, sure. That is often standard in uh in online ccgs now um ledge of runeterra actually does have some where you have to win um but again you can beat the ai in ledge of runeterra and you still get those quest completions and the ai in ledge of runeterra is actually very fun to play with because they have a variety of decks and they're relatively good at playing them but runeterra still has those play whatever thing deal damage with whatever Right, it still has those things, but it's it's not that's that's a standard, right? That's that's not that's not something to to tout really. Our quests are blah 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 uh, with a once a day reroll option that lets players tailor their experience uh, if one of their quests doesn't fit their preferred playstyle. Whoop de do. Legend of Runeterra has essentially the, a similar a similar thing. They have uh, you get one new quest a day, and you can have up to three quests, but on Runeterra. You can store rerolls up to two, right? So if you don't play for a couple days, you'll come back. You say like, "I'm going to reroll this," and then if the thing that you reroll, if the quest that you reroll into is not to your liking, you can reroll it again. So you don't have to use uh, the two rerolls on two separate quests, right? If you have three quests and two rerolls, you can just reroll one twice. You can reroll one, and then st if you are fine with all of the th the three ones that you have now. You can store that last one for tomorrow, right? If you if you beat all those three quests and then tomorrow you have a quest you don't like it, reroll. Still don't like it, reroll. And then the next day you're gonna get another quest, even if you don't complete that first one, and you're still gonna get a reroll back. And let's say this time you do those two quests, you don't use the reroll. The day after you're gonna have another reroll. You're gonna have two rerolls. So like this again, like. It, this isn't this isn't a thing that Wizards is doing well because there's another game that does it better like Arena uh, Legend of Runeterra's um, quest system is better than Arena's it's the same but better uh, actually it's, it's even it's even better than that because some quests you can do one of two things Right, some quests are options, right, where you can either um, uh, win uh, win three games with uh, Sharima or uh, Freljord. I'm, I'm like spitballing. Uh, no, Sharima Freljord is too difficult. Uh, with what units do similar things? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, with Noxus or Demacia. Or have your units have your unit survive damage, and it has some amount of da uh, like damage that you have to get to, right? Like you can do things like that, and Runeterra does things like that. So, eh. daily win uh, rewards are front loaded. Most of the rewards available on a day to day basis are earned in the first couple of wins. I suppose, you know, uh, people they still want to reward winning. I guess, I guess that's fine. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I can't really speak to this. Like, this is fine. It's understandable. It's whatever. Um, finally, we believe that opening packs should be fun and having collection should be rewarding. Having a collection is not rewarding when you can't do anything with that collection. The vast majority of cards that are created for, in, for Magic the Gathering are created for limited. That essential, like, that is essential, right? The majority of commons and uncommons, their goals are to be played in limited. 
many many of them, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna lowball with some. Many of them can see play in constructed formats, thanks to the fact that they are supporting certain archetypes. Right? You'll see uh, tribal decks a lot. will have plenty of commons and uncommons because, well, you can essentially get away with that. But having collection is not rewarding. I do not care about the 12 copies of Duress I have. I don't care about probably 80% of the commons and uncommons that are in my collection. That does not matter to me. Additionally, when you say that you want them to be... Blah, blah, blah. Shit, where was it? Am I stupid? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stupid. It's like right here. When you say you want them to not feel like they need to do this to remain competitive. And then you say opening packs should be fun and having a collection should be rewarding. Those two things are not connected. People who are competitive and who compete with cards, they don't buy packs. They might buy packs from time to time because they think it's fun. Totally fair. They buy singles. They buy the cards that they know that they need. They don't buy packs and say, oh, this card I could put in my deck to upgrade it. No, that isn't what is done, right? And they actually addressed this a little bit in the um, in the live stream where that was their intention was to have people just, just upgrade decks as they get new cards from opening packs. That is not at all how you build decks in Magic the Game. In, in, like non-literal tabletop casuals other like other than that that isn't how you fucking play magic the gathering right it, it's it's just like not so that super annoying constantly evolving you never know where cards are going to read life into previous release cards i don't think this happens very frequently i think wizards is really over addressing this point i know they only put it in a line but they talked about it in the thing uh, in the the thing as well, but my question, actually, I, I think they answered a different question. I did ask this question, but I think they answered a different one. My question essentially was, I I can I can accept that you don't want us to just destroy our cards to get gems or, or whatever back. I can I can kind of understand that, kind of. At least let us exchange the wild cards because that that does not get into this issue. Right? Oh, my, 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 uh, freaking, I'm just gonna use duress as a, an example because I can't fuck you. Um, oh no, my duress. I dusted it and now I would have to remake it because they printed this card that makes duress even better. One, uh, rarely happens. Really can rarely happens. It does happen. Don't get me wrong. And it has happened on Arena. But generally speaking, doesn't happen all that much. Unlikely to actually matter. But then, I could just say, okay, uh, three. Let's say, let's say, let's say it's four to one up, two to one down, or one to two down, right? So in order to get one uncommon wild card, you have to spend four commons. In my opinion, it should be three commons. It should be three, three to one up, uh, one to two down. But let's say, let's say it's four, just for the sake of argument. If it's four to one up, I'm gonna spend four commons to get one uncommon. I have to spend four uncommons to get one rare. I have to spend four rares to get one mythic. And then the reverse, I have to spend one. I can I can yeet a mythic wild card to get two rares. I can meet I can yeet one rare to get two uncommons. I can yeet one uncommon to get two commons. Right? That is a reasonable thing to allow players to do, especially considering because of an, uh, the actual question that I asked that got answered uh, about rare lands, especially since the fact that rare lands are necessary to again remain competitive the fact that you have to use those rares means rares are typically going to be more of an issue than mythics so being able to turn those for some people garbage mythic wild cards into rares that are king usable right we could do that but Again, this was answered in the live stream. They don't want to do that either. Because 
because they would have to revamp the entire economy. Because the the rate of acquisition for commons and uncommons, the, the, the wild cards for those, is set and is like a cornerstone for the rest of the economy. Uh, here's what I say to that. That's stupid. You don't have to change that. Because if the economy were great, then it would make it would make no sense. Why why fix what's broken? But it's not great. That's the issue. People are complaining that Arena is just predatory. And if you just kept the common ICR doling out the same, it would it would be easier for people to play. Yes, that's the point. You said that you want them to remain competitive. I, as a person who makes content on Arena, this is for my job, right? I spend loads of money. I craft all of the commons and uncommons. I happen to be left with some, a decent amount, of common and uncommon wild cards. I am not the typical arena player. The typical arena player is going to have probably a ton of those uh, common wild cards because they're not making every common because the majority of commons are for limited and you don't need them. And as such, when they get those common wild cards that they just don't need, because again, commons and uncommons, not all that important for uh, freaking constructed. And even if they are, you have you have plenty of them. You have plenty of the, unco uh, the common and uncommon wild cards. Let them trade them for a terrible rate to get the damn cards that they actually need to stay competitive. Why? Why is it so hard? Seriously, like there's there's no they did not give a justification, right? They said why they aren't doing it. They did not give a justification as to why. They don't need to change how the common and uncommon wild cards are, are given. They don't have to change those rates because the rates are bad because common and uncommon wild cards we don't need. <laughs> like, period. So that's, that's one thing. And then, b uh, before I go through this, I asked... I mean, I asked several things, but I asked, given the fact that one of the big sinks for rare wild cards are the dual land rare cycles in new sets, have the, has there been any consideration that Wizards should just provide players a playset of just the freaking, the, the mana fixing lands, the mana fixing rare lands from new sets? And I... I I mean, I'm recording this at 8. Uh, I watched that at, like, freaking 2 or something like that. Um, the response that I got was, essentially, that's part of the allure of new sets, right? That's a thing that people are want, are going to want to get. Yes, do you know why they want to get... And they even mentioned, they even mentioned in the response. And again, I'm not, I'm not mad at Blake or the other person whose name I've forgotten already. Uh... Chris, um, I'm not upset at these people because I don't think these people are necessarily the end-all be-all of these decisions, right? I, I don't think Chris walked into the uh, economy office and said, we're not letting them have their, their rare lands for free. We must make them purchase them. I'm not, I don't think he did that, right? I'm not blaming Chris. I'm not blaming Blake. I'm blaming wizards the entity that is wizards because the reason that people open those packs and they admitted to themselves uh, or they, they try to get these lands is because they are required if you're going to be competitive you need to have good mana you have to if you're playing a two, even just a two-color deck, right? If you're playing a two-color deck with only basics, literally only basics, or, or hell, even if you're playing things like Evolving Wilds, right? You're playing non-basic as well, but in order to fix, they come in tapped. Um, they are slower. I mean, coming in tapped is slower, but you know, they you know they might have some other downside, right? Your deck is going to be not as good. Because there's going to be more situations in which you don't... Not only can you get mana screwed, mana flooded, now you can be in situations where a specific one of your colors is just not there enough. You can't play, uh, you know, double uh, double pip spells or 
heaven forbid, triple pip spells nearly as easily. And as such, you are not going to be competitive. If I recall correctly, and I, I might be recalling this uh, incorrectly, I believe Chris said something uh, along the lines of, you know, like, it's something that they'll think about or whatever. But that would go a long way. And incredibly, do you understand, Wizards, how much of a PR boost that would be to just announce every new set? It doesn't It doesn't even have to be the full playset. Every new set, each, um, each player just gets... Two of each of the uh, the mana fixing uh, rare lands, right? Uh, Streets of New Capenna comes out. Uh, every player they get two of each of the the new triumphs or new triumphs. There we go. Um, people would be so happy about that because the the rare land is such an issue. I honestly didn't think that this uh, video would be very long, but you know what? I'm gonna change the title uh, to to six rants, I guess, because that's that's what this is. And I, I'm not, I'm really not trying to come off as like negative or anything like that. I fucking love Magic the Gathering. I loathe how much I hear people say I really can't play this deck or, or um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, take, I take uh, viewer, viewer submissions for decks and they will say, sorry for the unoptimized whatever. I don't have the wild cards, right? There are people, I, I have brewers in the community who want to be making and testing a bunch of different decks because that's what they love. They can't do it. They just, they just can't. And so my negativity is, is meant to be a positive form of negativity. Anyway. Uh, da, 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 breathing life, whatever doesn't doesn't matter. Stupid. Uh, Arena offers a variety of events beyond the primary formats, often with deck building requirements or limitations that emphasize cards uh, that may uh, not show up in the traditional metagame. Sure, those events typically uh, you have to pay for, and typically the rewards are trash. The the neon thing, the the whatever neon arcade, the event is a bad event. The cost of entry by number of losses that you can accrue by um, uh, the rewards you get matrix is awful. It's awful. It's terrible. These things aren't good. Additionally, not all of the players like them. <laughs> like, Momir on paper, or let me say on Modo, is fun. It's very interesting. It's cool. On Arena, it isn't. Especially, especially... When you add random things <laughs> that make the format like worse, like Grizzlebrand doesn't doesn't make Momir cooler. Yes, Momir ha there, there's an extent to which Momir is like random. It's meant to just be haha funny. Look what I got. But when you have the chance of getting a card that literally kills you or a card where you just win the game, it's not fun. It just becomes tedium to get. Uh, to, to get the, the rewards for those are typically free formats. Uh, it, it's... Again, this is not a selling point. This is not a selling point. Especially because, and this is another question I asked, unfortunately this is not get answered, they only were able to answer so many questions. Because I asked, is there any plan on the horizon to give new options to, um, to direct matches? For example, I want to play Momir with friends and then maybe i could adjust the cards that you can get in momir wouldn't that be super cool i didn't put that part uh the maybe we could adjust things but just arena offers a variety of events no it doesn't arena offers some random different things from time to time it does not offer them i can go to my local game store right now and while it's not uh it's not momir per se i could play with someone um Gosh, I forgot. I forgot what it was called. But essentially, you have like a just—it's not Mage Tower. Maybe it is. I don't. I don't remember. But you just have a stack of cards, a, a, a deck of random cards. It can just be draft chaff. And is it is it Garfield? Is it is it just is it just card called Richard Garfield? I don't remember. But essentially, you, let's say I have a um, I have an Adanto Vanguard, right? I can play this as any 
card that has exactly uh, one one uh, generic and one white mana cost, except for Danto Vanguard. So I could I could play it as Thalia. I could play it as um, Indomitable Will. Or I could play it as, as those things, right? I could do that. I could I could go somewhere. I could play Popper whenever whenever I want. And if one of your things is to pay people to be able to play where they are, and yet we have to have random both that we can't play with our friends, then you lie, good sir. Anyway. Often, the, for what it's worth, these deck building requirements are also uh, quite boring for uh, a lot of the time. Uh, boring or RNG, like too RNG, especially since they're best of one, so like you just get screwed over more. Um, having collection lets players participate in these experiences and rewards uh, general engagement in the economy. No. It gives players who are currently active in the short window of opportunity for these events, who happen to have the cards required for these requirements and limitations to to participate in often the slog of trying to get rewards that in the, at the end of the day are meager compared to either the gameplay they have to go through or the cost of entry to to the the fun format anyway for constructive play our focus on deck iteration over collecting every card in a set Deck Iteration. The economy is designed around building your own specific decks over time. That is not how people... That is not how people play Magic. Unless you are a brand new player. An absolutely brand new player. And or someone who just plays on the kitchen table with their friends. You know, I, I've talked about this in uh, the Mythic or Mistake series several times, right? Where the vast majority of your games are going to be like battle cruiser things, where uh, no one's attacking anyone else, just because like I don't want to, I don't want to have a chance of losing some of my creatures, and and you just build there and, and do things until, of course, one player realizes, oh, I have enough to kill you. They attack, uh, and then that player uh, wins. Other than that, people do not do this. I'm not going to come to a vintage event with half of a vintage deck with the other half being like worse cards in that position. I wouldn't do it in Legacy. I wouldn't do it in Modern. I wouldn't do it in Pioneer. I wouldn't do it in fucking Standard either. I'm not going to uh, build half of a uh, um, a black-red alchemy uh, sack deck and then just shoehorn in some commons and uncommons that I happen to have lying around. No, because you know what's going to happen? I'm not going to be competitive. I'm going to lose again and again and again, and since I'm losing, I'm not getting... Where, where's this shit? Where's this fucking shit? Where's the front-loaded? There we go. Uh, because they're not, I'm not getting any wins, I'm not getting any of these front-loaded rewards, and as such, I'm never able to upgrade my deck, and as such, I'm not having a good time with the economy. This is not how players make decks. Players make decks by test, testing whole cloth decks, which is not something we can do yet. It's something that they did address, and that is a positive thing. Don't get me wrong. But it's not something we can do as of yet, on Arena anyway. And then buying the cards when they realize, hey, this seems pretty good. Players do not open packs to, to put cards into their decks. It just isn't a thing that people do. Asterisk, there are definitely casual players who do this, but again... Constructive play, competitive, right? Um, if, uh, most players have a deck, color, or style preference, and we expect players just starting out... Oh, wait, wait, wait I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about this first. Yeah, I have a deck, color, and style preference. I like to play non-counterspell control decks. I like to play Death to Texas, which I guess is a non-counterspell control deck. Uh, and I like to play mid-range decks. <laughs> mid-range. Uh, that used to be a thing. Anyway, I like playing those. I like playing... With black, white, I'm mostly black and white. I, lo I love those colors. But, sure. Yeah, okay. True. Most players do have those. Not all players. And a lot of players, maybe most, I don't know, don't want to play the exact same deck for the entirety of a season. I love playing Death in Texas. 
I'm not going to play the exact same deck of Death and Taxes for an entire season. I like Grixis Control. I'm not going to play the exact... I'm going to change it up a little bit. We expect players just starting out to take decks from the color challenge that appeal to them and evolve them before moving on to experiment with deck builds of their own, searching for additional deck ideas from the community. So I, a veteran player, right? Remember, I'm a veteran player, but in terms of arena, I'm just starting out. As a veteran player, I'm going to take a bad deck. The color challenge decks are objectively bad. Do you know why? They're not even remotely competitive. And what I mean by this isn't they aren't, you know, they're not something that I can take out of the box directly into the uh, the color challenge, or not the color challenge, sorry, uh, into a con uh, standard constructed event or whatever and, and raffle stomp. That's not what I mean. What I mean is uh, they are decks <laughs> that have objectively poor fixing. There are decks that have uh, way too many non four ofs frankly. Uh, there are decks that are running just purely poor, like bad, just bad cards. Just bad cards. And there are decks with way too few rares. I understand wanting people to be able to upgrade their decks. However, when you are trying to start from a deck that is literal garbage, you cannot win, so you cannot upgrade your decks. Additionally, you cannot gain any rewards for playing against the AI, which again is trash, or against playing with friends. Since you can't do that, <clears throat> how are we meant to progress in this economy? Before moving on, experimenting with deck builds. How do you experiment with deck builds when you do not have the resources to do so? Because again, this is a new player, which means they have nothing in their account. Maybe they have a couple of uh, packs from all of the, the random pack codes that, that have been given over time. Sure, maybe. I don't think those... Let's, let's be generous and say 80 packs. Right, pull this number literally out of my butt. Let's say 80 packs. Those 80 packs across several different sets, some of them are no longer in standard, by the way, could be good enough to get them actual upgrades, and they're definitely not going to get them enough to make a new deck. So with deck builds. Again, can't really do that uh, when you don't have the resources. When you just don't have the cards. You just don't have the cards. Um, uh, searching for additional deck ideas from the community. Do you know what those deck ideas uh, have in common? Yeah, they're mostly playsets. Asterisk. Uh, but they're mostly playsets. And they're of cards that are actually good, which means they're not in the color decks, which means you're starting from zero. You have to build deck from zero. And you know what's not easy to do in this uh, in this game because of the economy? It's build deck from zero. Simply playing every few days and completing quests will provide a steady stream of currency and packs players can use to grow their collection with, while still having reasonable decks starting out. This is a fucking lie. The decks are not reasonable. Let me just let me just double check. I just want to double check. I'm just gonna double check. Arena color challenge decks. Uh, wait, are these still the? No. No, these aren't still the decks, right? Uh, 2022. Huh. Okay. This might be old. Regardless. Uh, let's look at the the white blue. You know, okay, I'm gonna put it over here. Boom. The white blue sky patrol. We have one mythic rare in Stormhind Holy. We've got, let me guess, one Lumeric aspirant, which has been changed. One Lee Spellbinder. One Grazalax. A Cosmos Charger.
Oh, cool, a Doom Scar. We got one Hanger Gate Pathway, four Glacial Floodplains. Why? Focus on the Fortel mechanic and flying creatures. Its face card is Vega the Watcher. Huh, it's a face card, you say. But it's uncommon. And you have a bunch of two ofs, three ofs. But you have a ton of one ofs in your rare slot. That's bad. It's just bad. Focus on life gain creatures. Its face card is Core Celebrant. A common. Icing Death. What does Icing Death have to do with life gain? This is a reason it's bad. Righteous Valerie? Makes sense. Unfortunately, there's only one of them. Drizzt? I mean, I guess it's... No, no. It, like, I don't even care if it's a white green deck. Like, you're not playing Drizzt in one of these. But sure, whatever. That's that's fine, I guess. Um, sure, this has to do with life, whatever. Fell in retreat. Great card. Too bad you only have one of them. Inscription of Bundists. I guess... And then pathway. You, should, you shouldn't even count these lands. Like this is five. This is five rares. One mythic, right? And it's just it's just a bunch of fucking one ofs. Even if it's not a freaking rare, is one ofs, dude. Like icing death has no. There's no reason for that to be in here. Um, th this card is just bad and still it's a it's a one of. It's still terrible. This card, not not really good, man. It's. It's cool that you have this. Cool that you have three of these. Like, that's that's a good direction. Why do you have the rest of this trash? I, I don't understand. I, I just don't understand. Why? A blue-black control list. Sure it is. Sure it is. It has 16, 16 creatures. So it's a control deck. Yep. 16 creatures, control deck. Gotcha, of course. Um, Garbo card. Garbo card. Fun fact. Garbo card. Not technically a Garbo card. Again. Again. Too bad they're all one ofs. Absolute Garbo card. It's fine, I guess. Again, one of. Uh, again, kind of fine, although frankly it's not great. Sure, whatever. And then Garbo card. Bad card. Bad card. Not actually a bad card. But you, you see what I'm, I'm saying, right? Like, it, it's putting in objectively bad cards. <laughs> For, like, no reason, man. For, like, no reason. Why is, why is this deck playing Port of Carfell? Really? To get you back, to get back your Black Dragon? Really? It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's not a reasonable deck. It's, it's stupid. Fucking every few days playing completing quests. Oh, sure, you can complete quests while you lose constantly. We expect this behavior to continue for our more advanced players. Those who have grown as players in MTG are joining as veteran Magic players, but by the virtue of their experience, we expect them to have an even better understanding of what they are looking to build and to have more specific card needs. We expect these players to rather more on crafting over the organic process of opening packs. Okay, how are we supposed to craft when we get when we first get into arena? Tell us, how do we get those how do we get those crafting uh, uh, resources? I'll wait. I see. Mm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Nothing. This is not how players make decks. Rely more on crafting? No. If I'm an experienced player and I'm going into Arena to play Standard, the Frontier format, I'm going to craft the exact deck that I want to craft. And in order to do so as a new player, I have to slog through playing the game with trash or I have to spend lots of money. Buzzers assume players who don't want to spend money will earn cards and make those changes over the course of a release season. A release season. So by the time I get enough uh, resources to to get the cards that I need, the release season is done. And I have a whole new release to, to deal with, release to deal with. Unlock levels of the mastery system. Again, uh, the mastery system for free to play, it has some packs, sure, but it does not have nearly enough. 
to matter because again we're not spending money here the mastery system doesn't do all that much if you're not spending money i think it's a decent investment for the most part they're they they fluctuate up and down but we are spending money. participate in events what the events where you spend 2000 gold and have the option of playing best of one with only two uh, two losses available to you in order to get some meager rewards those events and just general play oh and just generally play they will have or need to have resources either saved from previous rewards or purchased from the store so they just, they just go out and say most players assume that players don't want to spend money they will however need to have the resources either saved up from previous rewards aka you actually aren't a new player getting into arena which is what the uh they essentially said here right or you have to get them from the store you have to part you have to buy them i should mention i'm not against buying cards to uh what's the word i'm, looking for? I'm not against buying cards in order to not deal with the slog i'm not i'm i do not i don't think that is a thing that matters Magic is not pay to win. Being able to just like buy wild cards, for example, wouldn't make Magic pay to win. It would make Magic essentially pay to play, which is what it kind of always has been. But you know, now you have the option of paying with time instead of money. But we'll, we'll get we'll get to we'll get to paying for wild cards in a bit. But what I'm talking about is what hmm that really good game, Legend Room Terror does, where you have common wild cards you can buy them for a certain number of gold or gems or money or it's coins and and there yeah so you can buy them for that or buy a common for the same things a rare for the same things and a mythic for the same things of course there it's champion cards and instead of uh golden gems it's dust and or it's shards and coins but that would be nice if I could just say, hey, I'm building a deck. It has 12 rares, 8 mythic rares. 12 is a bit low. Let's say 18 <laughs> rares uh, and 8 mythic rares. And the rest are commons and, and whatever. Look at that. I have this amount of gold. I'm going to buy the deck, right? But no. Without focus on deck iterations, which is the wrong thing to focus on this this is objectively the the worst thing to focus on if you care about your players having fun and staying competitive this is bad this this is this is bad it, it it is i would like someone at wizards to try to explain to me why this is good for the player base and to give me the data that says that this is how players the majority of players who aren't the ones on the kitchen table who aren't even playing arena the majority of players do that Give me, give me your records of of uh, F and M tournament uh, organizers saying, "Yep, that's what people do." Give me, they don't have to be playing at F and M. Give me the the people who are saying, "Yeah, I have players come in to buy packs from time to time in order to upgrade their their casual tabletop decks." I'll even accept that. Give me that information, and then maybe I'll say, "Okay, I was wrong." Decorations away. It's not how people. It's not how players play, and it's not what players want. <laughs> So stop focusing on it, period. Like, end of story. We do know that players who are completionists, players who wish to collect every card available, may find collecting sets harder. It has nothing to do with being a completionist. Technically speaking, I've been playing since closed beta. I've been playing Arena more than the, va the vast majority of my audience. <laughs> Essentially, all of my audience, most likely. Um, I've, been, I've been in since closed beta. Unfortunately, I didn't get into the alpha. I've been in since closed beta. I do not have a complete collection. I spend loads of money on this game. Luckily, I only play it for business. I don't really play Arena to have fun. Not not right now, anyway. It's entirely business. If I want to have fun, I will try to play uh, Magic the Gathering with my friends. Not on Arena, is what I'll say. The fact that I 
someone who spends loads of dosh on a monthly basis for this game, and I play it as a hyab. So I'm playing it a little bit more than other people. Probably on average more, like more than like 60% of the average player base. Words are hard. And I still don't have a full collection. Shows that this is not, this is an incredible understatement. In practice, we know this is a rel relatively small segment. Yeah, it sure is. But something we want to support. Really? Really. We'll soon be launching a Mythic Booster Pack available for 1,300 gold. That ensures that the card in the rare or Mythic slot is always a Mythic Rare, unless it's replaced by a Wild Card, which could be rare uh, Wild Card or Mythic Rare. This should help collectors who are Rare Complete, but are still missing Mythic Rare cards. To be honest, this is not a terrible solution. I would have preferred if this was only a 20% markup instead of a 30%. Um, yeah, it, I think if this was t uh, 1,200 gold, it would be even less likely that people are going to be upset with this. I think, in general, this is a fine thing because more options, generally, are better. In addition, we know that this structure is not ideal for players who are deck brewers. Or who like to build many decks in reaction to the metagame. You don't say. Um, so this covers like, you know, 25 to 50% of the player base. And this covers essentially the rest. I'm going to be, I'm going to build a deck. I'm going to build a, a mono white aggro deck. Oh no, the meta has shifted. Mono white decks and or aggro decks are trash right now. Guess I don't have the economy to uh, change my deck in reaction to the metagame. Well, there may be some overlap with, these, uh, with com the completionists. We're also evaluating some options that will improve the ability for explorers to try decks without the full commitment of collecting, crafting all the cards up front. They did mention this. Uh, they said that they were... Um, like actively working on a system, a system where uh, they're not sure exactly how it would work, but um, if there are events where you where it's kind of all access, that's you know not something you have to pay for and is always available, um, or um, you know you have to fight Sparky and they one sec you have to fight Sparky or um, or you're able to maybe borrow decks from friends or just play these decks against friends. Um, they said they were they were you know looking into that that stuff. I I don't remember if he said how far they're in, but Chris hilariously mentioned the fact that Sparky is a bad AI. He didn't say it, but it's easily inferred because what he said was uh, you could do it against Sparky, where you essentially goldfish. Goldfishing essentially is playing against nothing at all. What he's saying is Sparky is not a thing, which is what I've been screaming at for a long time because Legends from Terra has great AI and great AI decks that you can literally play against and they play decks that are actually played. So imagine Sparky, right, where you could set it, where you could, oh, where you could set it to standard, alchemy, historic, and eventually pioneer. And then Sparky will select one of, I'll, I'll take five decks that are, that are played in that, in that format. And it plays it, it doesn't have to play it good. It doesn't have to play it well. It just plays it such to the fact that, like, you can, you can pretend that Sparky is, like, just a kind of uh, a player who net decked and they don't really know how to play their deck, right? Like, that type of thing. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be lovely if that could happen? Or, better yet, instead of making it random, let us just, you know, choose the deck we want to go against. How do limited uh, events draft sealed factor in this? I don't care about limited. I'm saying that right now. I have like 27 um, draft tokens. I, I don't care about limited. However, there are some people who only want to play limited. And if we if we go back up here, we got that, and then we got this. If you're a limited player, arena hates you. 
Limited's primary goal is to have fun with cards from a given magic expansion. That fun can be building a deck from a limited selection of cards, or improving your skill at reading packs on a draft, or just uh, or even just uh, experiencing cards in a way that is more engaging than opening packs. That that is literally the point of limited. It's literally sealed draft and um, draft. Since we value collections, ensuring players keep cards they open outside of special events like cubes is important. But the events are also designed to be rewarding if all you want to play, uh, if all you want is the play experience. This gives them extra weight uh, in the economy. We're aware of this and we'll be looking to adjust constructed event structures to be more in line with our limited counterparts. This does not even talk about the fact that if you just want to play limited, you are fucked. Limited is primary goal to have fun with those things. If I'm a player, so right now I'm a player that prefers constructed, right? I just don't, I don't like limited. It's fine from time to time, but from time to time for me is like every freaking like once a month, <laughs> if that. But if you're someone who just wants to draft and all you want to do is draft, getting packs is meaningless. Getting wild cards is meaningless. You don't care about your collection because your collection is nothing. Do you know what you can do on Moto? You can play a limited, and then if you do well enough, you can just buy new buy new uh, limited events. And if you're playing a draft that isn't a phantom draft, uh, the cards that you get, uh, because it's moto, you can sell them to get more tickets to, again, play it more limited. I'm destroying my throat right now. I'm sorry, future Justin. Gotta keep it lubricated. And instead of mentioning anything of like, we're going to make it so that it's a little bit easier to go infinite and limited. They say they they want constructed events to be more rewarding, which is fair. For what it's worth, constructed events are kind of. Like, honestly, I feel like since limited, other than, other than special events like Cube, gives you packs, maybe instead of giving you packs as rewards, because that's stupid, it just gives you gold, and it gives you better gold for it. And then you can use that gold, if you're a constructed player, to buy the packs that you otherwise would have gotten. Or if you're a limited player, you can just play more fucking limited. How hard is that? And all of this, for what it's worth, like, all of this, all of this ranting and rambling is all predicated on the fact that Wizards refuses to be smart about any goddamn thing and do what other successful free-to-play things have done. Make it about the cosmetics. Make your, make your economy team not care as much. Like, like, it's not, like, they set really easy cheap prices, great rewards for playing the game. It's easy to get a collection. It's easy to go infinite and limited and just play limited. It's easy to just make decks on the fly at a whim, whatever. And make it so that they're pumping out cosmetics. Every fucking month. Special edition cosmetics. Throwback cosmetics. Freaking, uh, they bring the player, the, the player chaos frame. They bring back uh, the old card frame and you can like, you can just apply that. To, to cards, you spend like a load of, of just money, just make it money. You know, if, if you offered 50 to $100 and you can buy the old card style and you can just apply it, like the, the old the old border, I should say, uh, and you can just apply it to every card, every card in the game, you can you can choose to apply it. Um, it it's, a, it's as if it's his card style, right? Do you know how many fucking enfranchised players would buy that? If you, if you sold a joke thing for like 150 let's let's make it stupid 150 dollars on april fools every single year where you can purchase for 150 a white bordered old frame and white bordered new frame you would sell those like hotcakes and the thing is even if you don't 
how much does it cost you to make that versus how much would you get? <laughs> right? Even if it doesn't sell like hotcakes, I feel like it would, based on Arena's uh, player base, especially in franchise players, I feel like, uh, I feel like it might cover the cost and then some. The economy of Arena should not be built around getting access to playing the game. The economy of Arena should be, hey, this game's super fun. Wouldn't it be more fun if you could have this pet and this avatar and these card sleeves and these card styles? And oh, you can choose a board. Hell, you can customize you can customize the background of the of the splash screen when you open the arena app. You can you can change uh, you can change select fonts to be Phyrexian. Other other random things. I, I just this game should be easy and accessible to play because it will ingratiate you to the players and the players who are sticking around are going to want to buy the shiny new cosmetics that you have Legend of Runeterra is it's, it's like the freest of free games I've spent decent, a little decent amount of money on Runeterra. All it has been cosmetics, because I, I have I have a full collection of Runeterra and then some. I have wild cards left over. I have uh, um, uh, rune uh, shards left over. I've crafted every card in the game. I mean, I've earned some of the cards and then I've crafted the rest, but I've crafted every card in the game. I'm actively not opening chests because I'm just going to wait until new cards come out. And then I'm going to open the chests and I'll have most of the cards. And then I'm going to use the rest of my wild cards and my shards that I got from playing to craft the rest of the rest of the cards. And then I can play any deck that I want. That's awesome. But hey, with this new set that came out, there's like four new emotes and like three new sleeves. There's more boards. I can use more boards. They have an entire theme for the champions. Champions in swimsuits. Champions going to school. Uh, Cybertech. It's not. It's not. It's not Cybertech. Uh, arcade champions. Right. There's so many things in that game where you can just buy things to look pretty, and then the cards you just get. <laughs> Player collections. If the constructed play economy is centered around deck iteration, why can't we dust our collection? For the initiative dusting is digital, whatever, you all know what that is. Uh, it's built on the belief that players keep the cards and open and earn. We know that the decks, who, I don't care. We never want players to feel pressured to dismantle their collection. Sure, that's that's fine. Again, this that's totally fine. Whatever. Whatever. Knowing, however, that opening packs and the hope of getting the cards you want places a ton of weight on what you have in the open or dust uh, was added uh, to another part of the energy arena to find and reinforce collecting packs. Every empty arena store pack you open not only concludes card inside, is the possibility rewards you a mare with a wear wild card. It moves you towards the It moves you towards the guaranteed rare mythic rare wild card. Whoop de doo! Uh, this combined with duplicate protection ensures that there is always a, a finite number of packs you need to open before you collect your card. Uh, you're after it without having to liquidate your collection in the process. None of this uh, includes the vault, which is uh, morphed from versions of duplicate protection into a bonus for those who have collected lots of commons and uncommons. While not a large part of the economy, we're happy with the role it currently plays as an additional source of periodic wildcards. First things first. This paragraph is stupid. And here's why. In Legends of Terra, you can craft cards with wild cards you can craft them with dust you can dismantle them for dust <laughs> but it's easy enough to get the cards that you don't need to dismantle anything you aren't going to uh what is it uh that's uh you're not going to feel the pressure to dismantle your collection because you have the entire collection because you can get the cards that you want to play additionally if wild cards weren't added, no one would play the game. 
I, I wholeheartedly believe that if there were not wild cards in Magic the Gathering, no one would play it. Because at that point, you are literally RNG, RNG in order to get the cards that are that you need. And that's not fun. It's not because that's not what people that's not what people like. That's not how, that's not how players play. <sighs> Secondly, and more infuriatingly, and this is so hilarious. This one, this one was kind of funny. Uh, Chris on the uh, the live stream slipped up a little bit. None of this includes the vault. While not a large part of the economy, we're happy of the role it plays. Chris almost said that the vault does not factor in into the economy on the stream, but he didn't say that because that would have been a lie because it does factor in. While not a large part of the economy morphed from a version of duplicate protection into a bonus. One of these things cannot be true. It's either just a bonus or it's a part of the economy. It cannot be both. Because if it's if it's a part of the economy, it is factored in with the other wild card allocations. Even if it is a quarter of a percent, either it is a bonus or it's a part of the economy. And I know which I know which one it really is, because this language is very very uh, 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 deliberate. I am someone who really likes to craft sentences, weave them together in such a manner to convey the precise uh, 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 line of information from my brain to your brain so that you are going to interpret it favorably. Or at least, most likely, you'll interpret it more favorably. I'm nudging the words to be such that I'm getting people to listen to more of what's in my head than what's coming out of my mouth. I know how to spot sentences. This is a sentence. Technically it's two, but you know, shut up. This is functionally a lie. Because they're telling us one thing and then telling us another. This is functionally a lie, and I do not appreciate it. Because even if it's not a large part, because again, they're not saying a small part. They're saying not a large part. Do you know why? Do you know why? Like This is, this is the type of thing I'm talking about. Do you know why it's saying, well, not a large part, instead of while only a small part? Because saying it's not something large tricks the people into, th into thinking, into connecting the not here with economy. It's not really a part of the economy. I mean, it's not a large part. If it instead said, well, only a small part of the economy, you no longer care. There's no not there. Only, sure. It's only part of the economy. Phrasing things in this way is deliberate. Because this is some shit I would do. Stop calculating the vault as part of the economy. Period. Doesn't need to be. In fact, make the vault better. Remove those uncommons. Make it another rare. We don't need those uncommons. Because according to you... I'm, again, no longer talking about Chris. I'm now talking about Wizards. According to you... The common and uncommon wildcards, they're dealt with. And of course... The vault's not a large part of the economy, which means the vault isn't a part of that calculation of how many commons and uncommons are given to players. Stop making it a part of the calculation. Or, stop fucking lying to our faces. And just admit, we calculate the vault as a part of the, the economy. Will we ever be able to exchange lower rarity common and uncommon wild cards for a rare mythic one? There are currently no plans to support this. Why? All of these other things are getting paragraphs. Why does this get one sentence? Why does it get why does it get one sentence? Additionally, 
why is he just talking about lower rarity? Why can't I go from upper to lower? Why can't I exchange a mythic rare for two rares? I have a whole series of mythic or mistake where essentially half of the mythics are actually worthy of being called mythics. The other half, well, they're mistakes. It's not actually half. It's probably closer to 70, 30, but shut up. Why? Seriously, why? They talked about communication and things being piecemeal, right? This is not communication here. This is a smack in the face of the people who actually think this is a great idea. Because you know what? It, it is a great idea. It, 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 it just is. It just is. What is the downside of allowing players to, instead of dusting cards, because you don't want us to hurt our collection, instead of doing that, when we get a bunch of uncommon wild cards, because we keep opening them packs, or, or we're getting them from who cares where, I can say, you know what? I really need a rare. I have 16 commons. Yeah, yeah. I have 16 commons. I'm going to turn those 16 commons into four uncommons. Those four uncommons, I will turn into a rare. Cool. I really need a mythic. I've got 128, I think, commons. Look, my ma my br I I know it's only factors of four, but I is late. I've literally been yelling for an hour, and I'm not even done yet. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. It's it, it's plain ridiculous, disrespectful. Uh, I I cannot believe they've done this. I, 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 I'm in I'm incensed about this. Like legitimately, I am I am angry about this more than anything else. Because they aren't explaining why. Again, Chris uh, in the in the uh, live stream essentially said, because then we'd have to rework um, the way that we give out common and uncommon wild cards. No, you don't. No, you don't. The system right now is bad. It's flawed. People hate it. People are leaving the game because of it. You do not need to rebalance a poor economy by making it worse. You know what you could do? Rebalance the economy to make it better. And one of the ways to make it better is to let us exchange our wild cards. Because again, those aren't real cards. They're not a part of our collection until we make them into a card. So where's the remorse? I can't, I can't de, uh, oh, this rare that I turned into two uncommon wild cards because I really needed these uncommons. Well, you know, when the next set comes out, that rare wild card, it isn't, it isn't a thing that will see more play. It will be just as valuable then as it was now. Okay, but forget everything else. I just want to buy rare uh, or mythic rare wild cards so I can finish this deck. Well, this is currently possible by just buying packs. You know damn well that this is not what they, these people are talking about. This is not what us players are talking about when we say this. You know damn well. It is disrespectful. It is a slap in the face to players to say this. I just want to buy rare or mythic wild cards and your response to that is while this is currently possible just by buying packs, no, it isn't. Do you know what packs aren't? Wild cards. Don't get me wrong. You can eventually earn rare and mythic wild cards from just buying packs. But then what people are asking for. People want to be able to have a single common wild card price, a single uncommon wild card price, a single rare wild card price, and a single mythic rare wild card price. You can buy an unlimited number of those. And hey, while we're at it, while we're fucking at it, can we change, can we make it so that those can be purchased in any quantity? So I click on this and then it gives me a quantity and I click, I can scroll up or I can just type it in or whatever. And uh, I can say, I'm going to buy 20 common wild cards today. And I just, I do that and I click and then boom, I've just bought 20 instead of having to buy one. Say I do want to purchase it and then purchase it, got the confirmation of purchase and then click again 20 more times. And let's go ahead and do that to packs as well, because there's no fucking reason that I have to pay 1,000 gold a time to buy fucking packs for gold. Stop. Okay. We are aware of the process feels inefficient. It doesn't feel inefficient. It is inefficient. And unfortunately, your solution is some conniving BS. 
With the release of Streets of New Capanna, you'll be able to purchase Wildcard Bundle for $50. This bundle contains 12 rare and 4 mythic rare wildcards as a simple way to get the wildcards you need to finish off your current deck or kickstart your next deck. Now, Pleasant Kenobi. Mr. Kenobi has... Gosh, I think it was Amazonian. Who... Shared a tweet. Craft. How do I find this? I, I can't I can't think of how how to find it quickly, um, but essentially Amy um, who was also in that chat. Also, they answered a couple of Amy's questions, but they didn't they didn't say her name. But they said six streaming like totally fine. It's just Amazonian. Like how hard is that? Anyway. Amy referenced the fact that Vince, also as Pleasant Kenobi, did a whole video on what you get when you buy, I think it was $100, um, on a new arena account. Uh, Pleasant Kenobi. This is relatively recent, if I recall correctly, so I'm just going to scroll through his videos real quickly. Oh my god, was it not super recent? Because I'm pretty sure I watched it. Shit. Was this? No. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up, Vince. No, this isn't the video. God damn it! I don't know where the video is. I'm very sorry, everybody. Any anyway, um, he made a video. It was like fucking god shit ass mother. Damn it. Uh, he made a video essentially where he spent like a hundred dollars. He's like, "What? What can a hundred dollars get you?" Um, and he found that essentially for fifty dollars, you could get. Oh my god! I wish I had this information like right in front of me. I'm sure someone's posted in the comments. Um, there's no way it was five months ago. Damn. Um, anyway, he essentially said like, uh, or uh, M Amy said like, uh, he found that with fifty dollars, you got. Um, I think it was eight rare wild... No, I think it was... No, I think it was eight rare wild cards. Four mythic rare wild cards. Um, and then, like, 50 assorted rares and rares and, and mythics, right? Objectively speaking, this is a terrible deal. How do they get... How do they, how do they approach that one, that number? Honestly. And again, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to pause. This is so important to me. I'm going to find ex the exact tweet. I found it very quickly. Uh, Amy, I hope you are okay with me showing this in a video. From the pack opening that Pleasant Kenobi did on a test account, $50 of gems purchased as a 100 to 20,000 gem bundle, got eight rare wild cards, four mythic wild cards, and an additional roughly 50 rare and mythic cards. I have this information on hand because I was specifically making a video that I did, whatever, uh, with this information for reference. This is disgusting. It are the, it's these decisions. It's these decisions 
that make me that make me legitimately think that Chris and his team did not make this decision. Because anyone who did any of the math would know that that is not the correct price for 12 rare wild cards and 4 mythic wild, rare wild cards. And that is not even to touch on the fucking fact that you could only buy that with money. You can't earn that. Of course you can't earn that. You're not allowed to, to earn things other than packs in arena? What? Disgusting. Tabletop and digital play. Uh, does empty arena take into consideration players to collect cards for both tabletop and digital play? All I know is the players overlap each platform has own strengths and we try to emphasize. Uh, I don't I don't care. Uh, and uh, sure, whatever. I, I frankly I just don't care. I, I've I've given up all hope uh, that wizards do stuff like this. Uh, why should I play a digital product like uh, MTG Arena versus tabletop play with physical product? We believe that both tabletop and digital have play have their own vision. Shut up. Why Alchemy? Why not Pioneer or Commander or any of the other tabletop formats? This is a good. This is a great, great question. It's an absolutely fantastic question here. First, as we continually look to provide uh, experiences for all player types, we found that there are players who want a format that is able to grow and shift at a pace that matches the speed of digital consumption. Alchemy provides uh, an experience for those players, as, uh, as was shown by the recent Neon Dynasty champion. Um, hmm. The funny thing here, the, the funny, the funniest thing, is that um, who chose this to be uh, Alchemy? It said uh, winning Orza Adventure deck piloted by. Because uh, essentially they're saying, um, ah, shit. Who is this? Eli. No, I, no, I just want to see his decks. No, I just, I just, I just want, I just want to see the decks. I just want the decks. Is there really not? Is there not a way for me to easily find the decks? If I click decklist, will you show me the decks? Is this, is this really the best way to get to the decks? Lots, lots of cheese. His name is Cassis, right? Oh. That the Japanese naming convention uh, threw me off. Um. K R Cassis. Uh, this is a Phoenix. Excuse me, what this is, is it Phoenix? Because it's fucking historic. I hate you so much. More deck lists. I don't care who e is emailing me. Shut the fuck up. This is going to be a long video. This. Okay. I need to make sure I still have a, have, have a nice death. Cassis. Now. I do love that this is not even in the thing. So we got Forsaken Crossroads, Precipitous Drop, Tribe of Adventurer, City Stalker, uh, Connoisseur, and Dungeon Descent, I guess. Essentially what they're saying is because this deck was playing some of the buffed adventure cards, they're using that as proof that it provides an experience for players, uh, for the players that want things to grow and shift. I mean, I guess technically, but you literally buffed cards. I, okay, you, you buffed cards, then you forced a format to exist for a championship, and someone won with busted with, with buffed cards. H how many how many of these other cards? Like like, so cool. We we got we got that right because he's won with those buffed cards. Cool. How many other uh, buffed cards were there? Remember, we're looking for others. 
not a ton. Not a ton. Just scrolling through. Just scrolling through. Not seeing a lot of other. Not seeing a lot of other. And you might be saying, isn't that the point, Justin? He won with buff cards. No, it's not the point. Because just because you're buffing cards doesn't change. Ah, shit. That's historic. Awkward. Shut up. Uh, everything's bad. Oh, crap. Well, my words have been swallowed. Up at zero. Um, I mean, some of these are actually the nerfed versions of the cards. I mean, some of these are still the worst versions of the cards, so... Again, I'll... I'll, I'll I, luckily, I'll be able to not swallow all of my words, just some of them. Um, okay. The fact that some of the nerf cards are still being played just goes to show that even if you're changing, even if you're changing cards, it's, it's not going to greatly change the metagame. <sighs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, Historic was able to carve out an identity of its own that filled uh, the basic need for a non-rotating format on Arena. Couple of the fact that there's still five years sets uh, to get to Pioneer, we should priority is something that we could actually do uh, more quickly. Uh, this is disgusting because Historic does not have its own identity right now. I, again... We'll say for the thousandth time. I like that the alchemy cards come to historic. I hate, excuse me, I loathe. Let's go ahead and keep keep that theme running. I loathe the fact that historic has balanced changes based on non-historic format. Cards should only be changed in a format, banned, uh, modified, or otherwise, unbanned. Um based on the information from that format. A ban list should be from a format for a format. Changes that are required in alchemy should not affect historic. Notice I said required. So, like, if something gets buffed, go for it. Finally, Commander and other formats require even more uh, effort than Pioneer. While we'd love to find a solution for multiplayer in Arena, uh, multiplayer isn't necessarily Commander. You know, a long, a long way to get towards Commander on Arena is to just start putting the fucking commander decks onto Arena. You know, the commander decks that are now part of set releases, that are tied directly into a set, those decks. Crazy. <sighs> Whatever. There are some technical hurdles we need to solve before we can make meaningful progress. Uh, yeah, have a whole team that does that. Have a whole team whose entire job is nothing but that. Hey, Hasbro, slash Wizards, hire more fucking people. You're making hand over fish, uh, fish, uh, fist, ca fat stacks of cash because of this game. Invest more in it and you'll make more money. You know, do you know what people would love? Do you really know what people would love? Imagine for a moment, Wizards actually hires some people who can work on these technical hurdles in order to uh, make meaningful progress uh, for Commander. We get Commander on Arena. We get four players on Arena. Now imagine when, you know, we're getting all of these uh, these Commander decks onto Arena where you know, honestly you just be, should be able to buy them for cash, gems, or uh, gold at a reasonable price. Um, or you can just craft cards. Should also be uh, fine. Uh, Imagine if people could just buy some of the old popular commanders. Again, for uh, cash gems or gold. Imagine where you have the first release. You have Kalia. Uh, you have like the main faces and the secondary. You know, you got Riku, Kalia, Aloro. Was that the original one? Riku's teamer. No, Alora was not part of the original one. Okay, so the Jeskai one was Zedru. We got Zedru, uh, the Mardu one, Kalia. Uh, Teamer was Riku. Uh, Abzan was Gav? Gav Gave? 
Um, and then, or, I don't remember if Gav or Carador was the face. I want to say it was Gavi. Um, and then, gosh, what's the last wedge? Sultai. Sultai was Damia. And you have the others. Crap, can I remember the others? I know that the Jeskai one was Ruhan of the Fomori. Uh, then the Teamer one was... Uh, I can see it in my mind's eye, but I don't remember its name. Animar? Soul of the Elements or something like that. Uh, then the Sultai one was the Mimeoplasm. Oh, wait, it was Damia the Secondary. I don't... I don't look, I don't remember... But, you know, have to. Uh, this is this, this is just a mental exercise. It's good for you to do uh, stuff like this, by the way. It, it does help your memory. Um, then we have the Mardu one, which is... Shit, did I already say Teriel? No. I had Ruhan. Um, Mimeoplasm. Animar. Teriel, Zeriel. I think it was Teriel or something like that. The, the other angel. And then... Abzan. Yeah, Abzan was Caridor. Yeah. So just have like two of those. And boom. People will buy those. You do it for the next one. You do it for the next one. Uh, you have like the Commander Staples thing uh, that you can put onto Arena as well. Like, it's just... Oh, right. And then the last thing. Uh, Consciousness has pushed the format away from the tabletop that the players would like. As a result, we'll be adding a non-rotating format that exclusively consists of cards available in tabletop. This will give us the symmetry between our live and print formats, with each having a, a rotating and non-rotating variant. Uh, more news on this format as we get closer. This does not say Pioneer. They could just say, as a result, we'll be adding Pioneer to Arena Starting with some, like, not the entire set of cards, just starting with some cards. This is this is not what it says. And I'm very interested in seeing the absolute shitstorm that that brings. Now, let's transition to phase two. Ah, crud. Uh, I can just do that. No, not Arena. Dum Dum Chrome. There we go. I'm the Tin Man. Shiny and Chrome. Uh. Well, this is not bode well. I think it crashed. This was actually one of the bug reports in the patch notes that was allegedly fixed. It It crashed. I, I can't make this up. Close the program. Reopen arena. Are we good? An asset error occurred during your last play session. Really? I think wizards heard me. A freaking hour, hour and forty-five minute long video or something like that. First half of it is just literally, literally me ranting, and I'm fine with that, honestly. Okay, we're finally here. So, first things first. Let's go to the store. Trash. Hey, look, cosmetics. Awesome. Hey, look, cosmetics. Awesome. Although I already have the koi fish. Anyway. Uh, hey, look, Shiba Inu. People love this card. And now they get a pet with uh, painted on claws. The, the claws could look better. 
Everything else looks fine. Claws could look better. Cool. You'll love to see it. You don't love to see these. These are ugly... I think they're calling them depth styles now? They're they're still ugly. They're, they're trash. They're like actual, actual garbage. Um, cool. You got cool bundly things. Um, I do love this. This emote. It's fantastic. It's a Wi-Fi emote. Because <laughs> they, they recognize that, oh, wow. It's trash. But let's go ahead and go here. You can get three free packs by doing play Neo Alchemy, I think is what it was. Cool. Got three alchemy packs. Awesome. I do want all this. I probably will buy it at some later time. Hey, look. There's an event. Oh my god, it's free. The latest set of alchemy cards is here. And it's time to hit the laboratory to get things started. Did they... Nope, they still haven't fixed this. Again, I don't know how much you can see it on, uh, on like, the YouTube screen, but these are cropped poorly. This this entire thing needs to be shifted over. Or, well, technically this doesn't need to be shifted over. It's just that, like, the mask here needs to be pulled to the left a little. Um, we've arranged a few samples that you get you off and running. Give them a try. You'll receive 1,000 Mastery XP uh, when you join this event. I'll then choose any of those blah, blah, blah. Before we go there, I mentioned something about the mastery, uh, the mastery thing. About how it doesn't really give you a ton when compared with buying it. And it's true. So it gives you it gives you one level. Each level, I believe, is, is exactly 1k. Yeah, it's exactly 1k. So I am here. So I just got a pack. So let's say I'm a free-to-play player. Going going to here gives me nothing. Then going then I get a pack. Then nothing. Then a pack. But again, these packs, they're only like eight cards. They're they're not great. Uh on this track, whoop do I get something every level, but you know. Whatever. I just is that cool? I just wanted to look at the sleeve. Just wanted to look at the sleeve a little bit closer. Just wanted to look at the sleeve. I even right-clicked. Didn't even, didn't even click normally. Now, let's go ahead and inspect these event decks, shall we? We got Blood Bowl, aka an alchemy deck that is already relatively popular. What's this? Why are you running Brittle Blast? Only two single brush strokes. <laughs> none of none of the actual freaking uh the hammer the, the the anvil, which is like the point of this deck having so many blood tokens. Wait. Wait, seriously? I mean I guess you can sack with that, but the point of this deck is the, the freaking anvil, man. Why only one rabbit battery? Why one and then four? How many? 18 creatures. Really? Oh, I guess because they want to show off Marth Rider Cavalry. They have a single Ryu? What? Hey, look. Wizards know how, knows how to make actually good Mana bases. Excuse me? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, this this aggressive creature deck is running 25 lands? Wait. Wait. I looked at this one first. The fuck? Wait, this deck's running 22? I guess technically 24? What the fuck is this? Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, a natural world. Um, sure. Uh, this one's running 23. I'm so confused. Oh, hey, look, a vehicle one. Vehicles are fun. This card is bad. This card is bad. Only two bank busters? <laughs> I 
forcing people to play this card, eh? Uh, this card's trash. Uh, I talked about it in the first uh, alchemy. This is from the, the alchemy vow. Um, yeah, alchemy instrument. This card is ridiculous. Why is this a mythic? It's a 3-3 three -three with lifelink that can give some more cards lifelink. Lifelink's not terribly powerful. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but like... Wait, what's even the point of teleportation circle? Just surge hacker? You don't want to reset this because counters. I guess Dragonfly Pilot works. Sure, I guess the pilot works. This kind of works. Why only two mech hangers? You don't need to include this. And then you don't need 25 lands. Was this, was this supposed to look like that? I don't think that's supposed to look like that. Hmm. Anyway, I'm just going to buy these bags. I'm just going to open some bags. All right. Another thing that I did talk about, this is jogging my memory, is um, someone asked, can we just buy the alchemy cards? Like, treat them as a, as a uh, historic anthology, essentially. Let us just buy the cards. Why do we have to buy packs of cards that we don't need? Hey, look, a common wild card. Four commons that I already own a playset of. And then I get three new cards. This pack essentially is worth half the value. Because I already have all those commons. Because I'm a whale. Um, if I recall correctly, the um, the response to that was relatively positive. Like, un you know, it's another person in the camp of like, yeah, we should just be able to buy. This. So like, it seems like maybe that's going to come with the the next anthology or the next um, alchemy thing, and it really should. Um, pe people shouldn't have to bu buy packs for alchemy. You should be able to treat them like historic um, anthologies, where it's just like you can just buy a, a place out of them, or you can just craft them if you want. Craft them if you got them. I just opened the last time. There it is. I think that that is everything. Um, they did try. They did say in the patch notes that they're gonna. That hopefully there's less. <laughs> No, it's better with just these. Uh, that they're going to try and fix it so that the crash thing doesn't happen as often. Well, we'll see. We'll, uh, we'll see. Because I crash too often and my freaking emotes get fucked. Also, wizards. We need more than 10 emote slots. We need this shit to F up. Like, I want most of these. I want none of these. Hell, I barely want any of these. Right, I already have two hello emotes. I have this and I have this. A nice emote? Let's go with... This. Thinking? This. Oops. This. <laughs> um... And now oops is actually that. And then good game is obviously either this... <laughs> this? Or this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright. Sorry for the hour and 40 minute long video, but I'm passionate about this game because I do love, I love this game. It has so much room to improve. <sighs> anyway, I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to support me being able to actually like still make content uh, like my lovely patrons have, you can find links to that down in the description. Uh, also, you could uh, become a channel member. By pressing that good old-fashioned join button, or you could um, you could subscribe on Twitch with a Twitch Prime sub, that also supports me. And uh, hell, if you have Amazon Prime, it's it's free real estate. Hope you enjoy this. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, all will be one.